This is Music, and this is another episode of Songs from the Puke Box. So I have another stack of songs from the puke box and this is just a what spinning series it just has the worst title ever it's based on a terrible pun um, I share with you uh, some of the music I've been listening to over the last week in these videos and uh, I have two cassettes and a bunch of CDs this time around so starting with the cassettes mindless sinner master of evil and also turn on the power also by master of evil both are out on the excellent label that is Jawbreaker Records. We're dealing with authentic early to mid 80s Swedish heavy metal of the old school. Um, it sounds like it's from the 80s because it is, but you know, it has the riffage is all out 80s riffage. The vocals are kind of melodic, but shouted. And uh, you have lots of reverb on the vocals too. Uh, the production sounds like it's it from the 80s and the cool thing about these two releases here is that This is a full length This one here is an EP, but both of these cassettes come with lots of bonus tracks some alternative versions and also some um, demo uh, Tracks and stuff like that. So there's a lot of music to delve into. This is great stuff. I love the just old-school 80s riffage here and uh, quite like the vocals too if if although it's not identical in style but if you like brats 1980 i think you will like this uh, stuff too and if you are into the new wave of traditional heavy metal this right here that's the style that those new wave of traditional heavy metal bands are trying to emulate so if you like that stuff i think you will like this stuff too i certainly enjoy listening to these cassettes just old school swedish heavy metal and then i have a stack of cds that i just grabbed randomly i didn't put any thought into it uh so the first one is this one here uh, iron maiden's peace of mind one of my favorite albums of all time by my favorite band of all time this one has certainly three maiden classics on um uh, flight of icarus and the trooper and i would say the opening track where eagles dare is also considered quite a classic it has this legendary uh, drum intro and it's a kick-ass song from beginning to end uh, you also have some fantastic deep cuts on here revelations and still live they're both kind of ballads in a way um, and i really love quest for fire and Sun and Steel. I think I like those two songs better than The Trooper and um, Flight of Icarus, to be honest. Although I like The Trooper and Flight of Icarus, I love those songs too. And then you have To Tame a Land and Iron Maiden Epic by by the standards of this era of Iron Maiden, because it's, it's only seven and a half minutes long. And that's almost what a short Maiden song is like nowadays, but it's a great epic song. It deals with Dune and uh it's a nice musical journey nice riffage uh very well composed great stuff definitely uh, a stone cold classic of an album also this one here uh megadeth risk um now i normally say that you know the title of this uh, series is just a pun it's just based on um you know jukebox and then the puke part is just a stupid reference to the fact that a lot of extreme metal bands these days have a fascination with vomiting. It's not normally uh, an evaluation of the music, but this one to me is a hurler. Uh, I don't like this one, to be perfectly honest. I think it's, I think it's just as bad as Load and Reload. So it's it's uh, Megadeth, uh, terrible album in my opinion, very boring. I don't like the production. I think most of the songs are not well composed. Now, this album has its fans, and that's fair. Uh, and some of those uh, people have told me, don't think of it as a Megadeth album. Think of it as a hard rock album. But I have to be honest, even as a hard rock album, I think this is bad. I think it's, I just think it's boring, to be honest. Um, 
and uh, some of the songs do have a little bit of uh, potential but it all falls flat at least uh, to my ears and i'm kind of i'm not against the idea of megadeth doing hard rock don't have a problem with that but if it's hard rock that i don't like you know then i don't like it so yeah risk uh i rarely listen to this one uh to be perfectly honest the next one is one i certainly like uh consuming impulse by pestilence this is probably the only one that i put some thought into because uh last week i listened to malleus maleficarum and this one was just next to it in my collection so i grabbed it uh still early death metal still very thrashy but you can hear the death metal sort of kind of being sort of further down the uh, evolutionary path so it's much more death metally sounding uh, the vocals are also more uh, guttural um, and and more deathy you have some great so it starts out with dehydrated and and uh, the process of suffocation fantastic songs both of them uh, just a fantastic uh, early death metal album if you are a death metal fan and you haven't explored the early stuff this one i think might be something that you are or should be or could be interested in checking out up next uh, another much maligned album nostradamus by judas priest i gotta say uh i don't dislike this album i quite like especially the, f the first disc has i think what people don't like about it is perhaps uh, that it has all those kind of little fillers and kind of instrumentals and, and all that stuff but you have plenty of just judas priest riffage throughout the first disc for sure and lots of of uh, rob halford screeching and screaming and lots of mid-range singing by halford actually he the highlight is probably Rob Halford's uh, singing on this album, but I think the first uh, disc is great. The second disc does drag a little bit because you have, uh, I think you only have one or two like hard rocking songs. The other ones are kind of slower and um, and uh, ballady and more epic and stuff like that. Uh, but I quite like this album. Uh, Prophecy, I think, is a great song. Uh, War, I think, is is a, is a good song too. Pestilence and Plague and Death, I think they're great as well. And um, I do like Nostradamus and Future of Mankind, the two closing tracks. So I don't have a problem with this. Is it my favorite Priest album? No. Um, but I, th I do think that people were probably a bit too harsh in judging this. It, it's, it seems kind of like... A lot of priest fans don't like it when judas priest when they try something new i mean people hated turbo uh a lot of people also hated the ripper owens albums although i think they're pretty good a lot of people hated this one and it's it's whenever they try something new people don't like it i quite enjoy this one i don't think it's their best album after uh halford return but i think it's a good album it, and also it's a concept album it deals with the nostradamus and i guess kind of back to the world of maiden in a way psycho motel and this one is called state of mind so this is uh, an adrian smith band he is right here um very heavy very groovy uh a good take i think on 90s alternative metal with uh, elements from southern rock and groove metal as uh, not a whole lot of groove metal but certainly maybe the groovy part it's more from southern rock i think a slight touch of the blues uh some influence from Jimi hendrix as well S heavy songs a really heavy and fuzzy guitar tone uh you also have some influences from kind of like 80s hard rock the vocals are more in the the glam and sleaze kind of department but they work very well with uh sort of in the overall picture starts out with a great track called sins of the father uh i really liked uh, psycho motel as well you have uh, rage a great song uh, time is a hunter 
another great song and money to burn a nice uh, groovy song as well i don't think there's a bad song on here so if you are interested in some of the stuff that adrian smith did uh while he was not in maiden and if you like 90s hard rock and alternative uh, metal and if you just like hard rock this is a, everything comes together pretty well on this album so do check it out up next uh rush uh retrospective part one and rush retrospective part three so um i don't have part two because um when i grabbed these ones when they came out i wasn't super interested in uh sort of rush from the 80s uh i'll see if i can pick up part two um this one is is by far the better in my opinion of these two this is from 1974 to 1980 so you have all the prog rock classics on here starts out with the spirit of radio and you I mean you're probably going to be hooked immediately by that one followed by the trees um uh, those two songs have caused me to almost crash on my bicycle several times because i caught myself doing air drumming while bicycling when, while listening to them you got free will that's another um, song that's dangerous when you're bicycling something for nothing uh xanadu that's a more epic song bastille day by torn the snow dog is on here you got anthem closer to the heart um uh, 2112 overture uh, and also temples of Syrinx, fly by night uh, the villa strangiato and finding my way i've just listed off or rattled off all the songs on here apart from finding my way all of these are classics I mean, a lot of people like finding my way it's just not my favorite song by rush but uh, this is a great representative of a representation or whatever of their progressive rock era uh and also a great introduction i think to rush uh, you don't have the super long songs on here of course because it's a compilation album and uh volume three here captures um their 90s and their 2000s stuff i do like uh i like all the songs on here but they're more kind of like classic rock songs um not that many bells and whistles i mean the musicianship is impeccable of course uh i just don't think it's as interesting as what you find on here so i i don't reach for this one as often as i reach for this one here you do have one little victory uh i think that's a pretty good song um i like roll the bones it's a nice funky song and i, I like the rap part i'm sorry i do uh, Far Cry is on here too, which I think is a great song as well. Um, one Little Victory, by the way, that's kind of like a based, uh, inspired in part by surf rock, I think. You got Working Them Angels, that's another song I quite like, I think. As far as I remember, Far Cry and Working Them Angels are both from Clockwork Angels, which I have, which is probably, I think, I have just haven't listened to it in a couple of years but that's probably my favorite rush album from from this era that's represented here but yeah out of the two this one i prefer that one this is just nice music to have on in the background and and you know just quite enjoyable and i should probably grab the uh the one that captures the 1980s because now i quite like their 80s style too i have to pick up some of their 80s albums too i i count moving pictures by the way i count that as part of the 70s stuff although it's technically an 80s album up next uh thin lissy johnny the fox uh great uh hard rock album nice riffs on here i think it's a i think it's a concept album starts out with johnny really cool riff uh, kind of very nice drive to it and i like that the chorus uh it's one of those uh, choruses where they just sing one word but it actually works very well um you got fool's gold nice uh, twin guitar work on there you got the sneaky funky song johnny the fox meets jimmy the weed massacre great song covered by maiden too so <laughs> 
got another Iron Maiden uh, connection here. And you got the weird, uh, noisy, uh, boogie woogie dance. I really love this album. I bought this album in, uh, I don't remember the name of the store, but I bought it in a record store in Belfast back in 2002, I think it was. I lived in Belfast for a while. Uh, so it's also kind of a nice kind of souvenir from that time. Um, also listen to this one here, All the Hits and More by UFO. UFO is a band I haven't really explored, uh, but I, I picked this one up and I think I picked it up in a record, not a record store, an electronics store uh, called Fona. It's a chain, they've gone out of business and I think it was the Fona in a mall called, a shopping center mall, whatever, called Rosengård Center. So there you go. And I picked this one up because uh, uh, D. Snyder said, he didn't tell me in person, uh, but I, I saw an interview with him where he, he kind of talked about UFO being an important band in the history of metal. So I picked this one up. Uh, it's pretty good, uh, kind of a hard rock, a late 70, 60s, early 70s sounding hard rock with a really heavy kind of Black Sabbathy bass. Uh, musically, it's a bit more lighthearted than, than Sabbath, but the bass is really, really uh, heavy. Um, it's a band I have yet to explore, but I have this one. I listen to it every now and then, and I will, I will probably pick up some UFO stuff uh, eventually. A blast, I guess, back to kind of the Maiden Connection, Wolfsbane, Downfall, The Good Guys. Uh, fronted by Blaze Bailey, who would later sing in Iron Maiden. This here is, I would say it's a hard rock album. Uh, very frantic uh, guitar work, but it works. You have some really fast songs here, some, some crazy fast riffage as well. Um, you also have like some groovy stuff. Um, uh, and you have some lighthearted stuff, like Easy is a kind of nice lighthearted song. You have Black Lagoon, that's my favorite song from this album. Uh, and you have kind of kind of flashbacks to this one if you check out uh, Man on the Edge by Iron Maiden. Because uh, there, there are parts where he sings down, uh, both in Black Lagoon and in uh, Man on the Edge. Uh, Cathode Ray Clinic, I like that song very much. It's kind of like, I think, a critique of, of uh, 90s television culture. Um, Dead at Last is a bit of a silly kind of bluegrass inspired song temple of rock pretty cool song there too uh smashed and blind strong opener um you look me down another nice uh, heavy it's kind of like hard rock metal kind of somewhere in the neighborhood uh blaze bailey sounds fantastic on here um just a great album i really uh, would like to pick this one up on vinyl at some point great stuff so uh, Downfall the Goodbye Guys by Wolfsbane. And I bought this one back when it came out. And I was a fan of Blaze Bailey before he joined Iron Maiden. I also love his solo material. Uh, I think both uh, this Wolfsbane album and Blaze's solo material, I think that's leaks above uh, the two albums he did with Maiden, in my opinion. I do really like uh, The X Factor. And I actually think that uh, it has a lot of downs, to be honest, uh, as well, but it has some highs and highlights. And the one hi major highlight to me uh, when it comes to the X Factor, that's actually Blaze Bailey's vocals. But there you go, a good stack of uh, CDs and some cassettes. And apart from Risk, if you want to check out Risk, though, go ahead at your own risk. I don't know, maybe you'll like it. I mean, it's just, just me. I don't like it, and you know... We like what we like, we don't like what we don't like. But apart from that one, I can recommend all the other um, CDs and the two cassettes as well. So there you go. Thanks for watching.